but <laughs> for those of you that came in late, uh, Patricia was telling us tale on me when we were ratif working on ratifying the ERA in Florida. And it was several hours, and it was hundreds of people in the rotunda, and everybody learned the song out of tune. <laughs> it was quite something. And I guess that, I, that that really is a way to define myself. I don't particularly come here and stand before you as a, quote, political leader. I define myself as an organizer. I'm somebody who's a catalyst, who many times has gone into states or towns and helped create an emergency sense and a spark for people to come together to empower themselves and move the movement of feminism forward. And I really have been incredibly lucky to basically be able to spend my whole career working on my passion. And I know that very few people get to do that. But that's really what I've been able to do, both through now and the feminist majority. And I feel very privileged by that. Um, I think that, to tell some anecdotes and stories, my first thought memory of organizing within the feminist movement was at the founding convention of the National Women's Political Caucus. And they were going to elect a national steering committee. And so the older women got together and had a caucus, and they got a couple of candidates out there. So a friend of mine and I, we formed a youth caucus, because I was all of about 19 then. And we, my, this friend of mine and I, we put for ourselves forward to run for the steering committee. And then these women that were in their 30s and 40s, they formed the Prime of Life Caucus. <laughs> and they came and made a deal with us that if we supported them, they were going to support us. So we were having this youth caucus, and we were all excited and all, you know, revved up. And these two women came into the room. And I'll never forget this one woman. She was dressed in a polyester blue pantsuit when polyester was not cool. <laughs> and I, of course, was dressed in a floor-length tie-dyed caftan. <laughs> and many, as many colors as there were of base sinks in our dorm room. <laughs> in our dorm uh, hall. Okay. So this woman started to tell us that we were going to get screwed by the Prima Life Caucus, caucus and we shouldn't deal with them. Well, we looked at this woman, and we decided that she clearly was at least 30. <laughs> so we kicked her out. <laughs> she was right, we got screwed. <laughs> and that person was Ellie Smeal. <laughs> That's how I met Ellie. <laughs> and to her credit, she didn't hold it against me. Because 40 years later, we've been working side by side for equality for women. And I think it's really such a credit to Ellie as a mentor and a leader that she was willing to accept this character. <laughs> and we're polyester. And we're polyester. <laughs> so I think the message is Look for a mentor and be a mentor. Be supportive, especially of young folks that are coming into the movement that we desperately need as reinforcements, their energy, their knowledge, their great ideas. And for all of us to seize the moment. When an opportunity looks you in the face, grab hold of it. I never planned to spend my life this way. But it all happened, and I feel very lucky that it did. You know, a lot of the young people talk to me, and they're planning out what they're going to do for the next, you know, what job they want to have in 10 years. I never knew that. <laughs> we went from one campaign, one crisis, to another. As an organizer, I got to or organize and travel all over this country, and we worked for the Equal Rights Amendment. And many times in different states, 
feminists went to the legislature and they visited with their member, their state legislator. You know what they found out? They found out that they were as smart as that person. No, they were smarter. And they went back and they ran for office. Tomorrow you're going to meet Sue Arrington, yes. who now has been in the state legislature in Indianapolis. She started as a now activist. Terry Schooley in Delaware, who's been a long time activist. She led the North Carolina ERA campaign. She's now in the legislature in Delaware. You mentioned Lois Frankel. The list goes on. And I like to say that when we do get the Equal Rights Amendment, and we will, our opponents are going to shake their heads and say, my gosh, why didn't we just give it to them? Because over the years, in our fight and struggle and learning in this movement, we have moved forward miles and miles for women's equality and for political empowerment of feminists. And that's something that can't be taken away from us and we have to continue to build and build on it. And I would just say, too, as you noticed, the point that you got to have fun. You have to build those personal relationships. There are people in this room that I know I can pick up the phone and say, hey, we have a crisis in Rochester, New York. We need your help. Can you house somebody? Can you do this? Can you do that? And they're going to say yes if they possibly can. Build an expertise. My expertise is I can go into any town in this country and figure out the best place to eat. <laughs> now, I may not really be popular, but people like to go to dinner with me. <laughs> and I would also say, you know, and it's an Emma Goldman quote, who I named my cats after. If I can't dance, I don't want to be part of this revolution. <laughs> so we got to just keep on moving upward. We're going to keep gaining. Remember that our opposition is really going off the wall because they know that we represent the overwhelming majority. And what we have to do is organize, organize, organize so that we see it in the voting booths, and in the legislatures, in the halls of Congress, and everywhere else. Thanks a lot.